Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry guys, you stuck up on me. Miss Wagner here again, and we are gonna talk about another reading skill this week that you guys have seen all year long. As you can see behind me, we are gonna talk about the skill sequencing this week. Now, sequencing is something you guys should be super, super familiar with, as we pretty much do it every day and we just don't realize it, okay? Sequencing, quick recap, sequencing is just a big fancy word for putting things in order. And we have to put things in order to make sense in pretty much everything we do, whether whether we're cooking, whether we're telling a story, whether we're writing a paper, we need to put it in sequential order. We need to put it in order so that it makes sense, okay? Now behind me, I have different ways that you might see um, how people sequence especially over here on this side of my board. This is what you guys are used to seeing when we sequence in school, okay? Now, this is not all the ways you can sequence, but this is what we're familiar with, okay? Sequencing, big fancy word for putting things in order, okay? Now, over here, you might see people sequence using numbers like one, two, three, and four. If you're a big cook like I am, I love to cook. Um, if you're reading a recipe, it's gonna be sequenced with numbers. And usually the first step is preheat your oven if you're going to cook something, okay? And then the last step is always going to be then serve it and enjoy or something along those lines, okay? When we're talking about sequencing in school, we don't typically use numbers. Um, we typically use some vocabulary words, which is right over here. But like I said, there's different ways to sequence. These are ones that we are familiar with, okay? The next one, you're going to hear these words first, next, then, and last. Okay, these are nice transition words when we sequence and whether we're telling a story, whether we're writing a paper or however you're sequencing, these are nice transition words. So I know, oh, I'm done with that step. Next, I have to do this, okay? You're also used to sequencing by beginning, middle, and end, okay? Putting things in order. Sequencing, big fancy word for just putting it in a nice order that makes sense. Okay, now I have a great story for you guys that you are gonna practice sequencing for yourself. Now, sequencing is putting things in order and what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna pretend that I never read this story and you're gonna tell me the most important things that happen. You're not gonna tell me everything. I could just pick up the book and read it myself. You are going to sequence using just a couple sentences, telling me the most important parts as if you're telling somebody who never read this story, okay? You could also sequence when you're giving directions, like if you're wrapping a present or if you want somebody to do something, you sequence, okay? Now, for this, I have a great book. It's called The Koala Who Could, okay? This is a fantastic book, as I hope you guys have enjoyed all the books I've chosen for you this year. But this is a great story, and actually, you could sequence any story, any book you can sequence anything because it's already in sequential order for you there's a beginning there's a middle and there's an end and there's all the events that happen in between i want you to practice sequencing after you listen to the story to pretend like i've never heard the story and you're going to tell me the most important things that happen what happened first and you're going to use one sentence you don't need to tell me everything just the most important thing that I should know is if I've never seen this. And I know you guys probably sequence um, verbally using your words. Like if you heard a great story, you read a great story, you tell mom and dad, aunt and uncle, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, whoever's at home with you, you probably sequence and oh my gosh, mom, I read this great book. First this happened and then this, and then oh my gosh, the ending happened like this. That's sequencing, that's putting things in order. Okay, you guys have probably done that a million times with movies you've seen. You've done sequencing verbally. Now I'm gonna challenge you to do sequencing um, by writing, taking the story that you hear, the quality who could, and putting it in sequence, sequential order in writing in your own words. As if I've never read this story, I should be able to read your sequencing on your graphic organizer and know exactly what the story was about and exactly what happened because you're gonna tell me the most important stuff. You're not gonna tell me every little detail. You're gonna tell me the most important stuff that I get the gist of the story. After I read your, sequ your sequential order, I'm gonna be like, I know exactly what that book was about. That sounds like a great book. Maybe I'll pick it up myself and read it. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm looking for you to do here. Okay, without further ado, The Koala Who Could by Rachel Bright. Okay, so this is a fairly new story. 
Um, and this is a, yeah, 2017. So this is a great book. And also this is also an inspirational story. If you're ever scared to do something, um, kind of like this koala. So I hope you guys enjoy this story. And remember, when you sequence, I only want the most important things. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to look at the pictures because they are beautiful. In a wonderful place where the day was dawning and the breeze blew soft. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. One of our spelling patterns, blue, B-L-E-W. Hmm. On a warm golden morning, in a place where the creatures ran wild and played free, a koala named Kevin climbed a tree. So what a beautiful place he lives. And here's Kevin right over there. I know it's hard to see because that's what the illustrator wanted. They drew him kind of dark and in the shadow. But here's Kevin, a nice gray fellow you never would meet, as soft as a soft thing from ears, tufts to feet. His favorite way to relax in the sun was to cling and to nap and to munch on a leaf bun. And after all this, well, he'd need a nice rest. Yes, Kevin likes sticking to what he knew best. So Kevin is a koala. He doesn't have a very eventful day. He wakes up, he eats some leaves, he goes back to take a nap. <laughs> the life, Kevin. All right, and here's all his pals. You can see Kevin lives up in the trees where koalas live. And here's all his pals down on the ground. And these look like fast creatures. Let's see what's going on with them. You see, high up was safe since he liked the slow pace, while the ground down below seemed a frightening pace. Too fast and too loud and too big and too strange. Nope, Kevin preferred not to move or to change. So Kevin was kind of scared on the ground because look at all these creatures that are super fast and they're super loud and they're big and they're strange and scary to him. And Kevin likes staying up in the tree where it's nice and safe for him. All right, it looks like he's got a friend. So he clung to his tree. There's Kevin, look at him clinging up there. As he knew what to do and was never too keen to try anything new. So Kevin stuck to what he knew, waking up, eating leaves, going back to sleep. Anything new, he's like, uh-uh, not for me. Look, there's his friend down there. So when Wombat stopped by and shouted one day, Hey, Kevin, why don't you come down here and play? Do you guys think Kevin's going to go down and play with his wombat friend? Probably not. Let's see what Kevin says. Um, I think he replied, I should stay on my plant. I'm busy right now. No, I'm sorry, I can't. So his wombat friend's like, hey, Kevin, come down here and play. And he's like, Mm, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Oh, look, he's got a bunch of friends down there now. And here he is. Why not, uh, cried the ruse with a super loud cheer. Yes, why, called the dingoes. There's nothing to fear. Do you guys know how this story rhymes? That's also why it's fun. And it's fun to read, too. But Kevin, who'd never been one to act fast, said, I've climbing to do, but it's nice that you asked. So he's like, eh, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna do that. I've got stuff to do, but thank you for asking anyways. Oh, look at all his friends down here at the campfire. They're having a great time. They've got a guitar. They're having a great time under the stars. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little Kevin up there. He's in the tree watching his friends like, oh, that looks like a great time. As Kevin sat watching them chatter and share, a part of him wished he could join them down there. So he's getting kind of jealous, like, oh, I definitely want to go down there and do all that stuff, but uh, I can't leave my tree. But he knew he'd miss home. It was dark and so late. The whole thing was risky. Adventure could wait. So these are all the things Kevin's picturing if he goes down there. Look. He's picturing that he might fall into a crocodile's mouth, that he's gonna be stuck down there in the rain. Whatever the invites, he'd always say, no! Oh dear, it seemed Kevin.
just couldn't let go. So Kevin's really scared to let go of his tree. So his life was the same. No matter the day, the weeks came and went and the months rolled away. And Kevin stayed still while the world moved around until it woke to a worrying sound. So days are passing, months are passing, seasons passing, and he woke up to this worrisome sound. Tap, tap, the sound went. Well, this was a blow. Tap, tap, and he tap, tap, tap. Oh no. So look, a woodpecker has invaded his tree. If you know anything about woodpeckers, uh, they're kind of annoying. Uncling, the crowd called which had gathered below. Leap and we'll catch you. Just let yourself go. But Kevin was scared. Let go? No, I shan't. I won't, shouted Kevin. Oh dear, I just... What do you think he's gonna say? Can't. Whoop! Down came the tree and with it was bringing Crash and a wallop, and Kevin still clinging. Oh my goodness, what is happening here? Seems like the tree came down. Kevin, he carefully opened one eye and looked up at the love staring down from the sky. Then one paw by one paw, he loosened his hold. He felt springy and light and happy and bold. So he's still holding on to the tree, but the tree's on the ground now. And he kind of let go and he's like, wait a minute. The worst he could think of had now come to pass and he was just fine. Why well, he felt quite first class. So when Wombat leaned over and held out his paw, Kevin no longer felt worry or doubt. So here's his Wombat friend. He's like, come on, take my hand. Do you guys think he's gonna take his hand? When Dingo asked, now will you come out to play? The crowd all joined in with, what do you say? And even though this wasn't part of his plan, Kevin replied, yes, I think that I can. And Kevin from then on was always can do. So like he's down there with all his friends. Because life could be great when you try something new. And look at him, he's enjoying life, jumping up and down, all his friends are there, and he's having the best time ever. So the koala who could, Kevin did not plan what happened, but he is so glad that it happened because life could be so much better when you decide to let go. All right, boys and girls, so I hope you enjoyed that story and I want you to sequence it for me using um, the graphic organizer I provided, which has these words on there. And remember, I only want the most important parts of the story as if I don't know this story at all. After reading your graphic organizer, I should know exactly how this story goes. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. And remember, you can sequence anything, any story.